I want to sing very old song. Okay, hello. Welcome. This is the Isle of Air Raid. This is an area called the Narrows, right in between two islands back here. And this is the New Moon newsletter for the month of Gemini. Today is Sunday, June 14th. And this very day, the sun has moved into the sign of Gemini. And so there's a lot to talk about. I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot going on out in the world out there. So we're gonna talk about, we got some eclipses coming up, um, another uh, a major solar eclipse coming up this coming Friday. Uh, we've got Mars changing signs, uh, Venus turning direct, and Jupiter retrograding back into Sagittarius. So lots to talk about. And one thing to mention is that uh, we spent 90 minutes or so talking about this eclipse cycle with the ladies of Cultivate Balance earlier this month. That video is linked in the newsletter. It's on the Cultivate Balance website. It's in the library on my website. So check that out. There's a lot more in-depth information about what these eclipses are all about. I'm just going to do a quick summary here because there's a lot to get to. So let's dive right in. Uh, the sun is now in Gemini. Gemini, the masculine expression of the planet Mercury. Now, Mercury is that talkative, outgoing quality, communicative, eager, curious, playful, really, really playful energy. And, and this key phrase for Mercury, especially in its outgoing masculine form, is, isn't that interesting? You know, Gemini is the person at the party who wants to talk to everybody there. And and at the end of the party, he's like, oh, who'd you talk to? He's like, oh my God, I met Bill, and he's got these qualities, he's got this going on, and then I talked to Jenny, and Jenny's doing this. And it's just like this very, very eager, active, communicative, collecting data is, is the prime motive of Gemini. And so one of the interesting things about Mercury, or the ruling planet of Gemini is that its day is longer than its year. And, and so what this means is it's making laps around the sun very, very quickly, right? It, it, so it's rapid, moving really, really fast, closest planet to the sun. And so it, it, every time it does a lap, it's collecting data. Right? One way to think about that is like with a radar, where every time it sends a beacon, it's collecting new data. So every lap it does, it's collecting new information, going around again, collecting all this data. So within that rapidity, that fast movement, that quickness, you know, that, that word quicksilver associated with mercury. So it's moving really fast, but it's spinning really slow. So quick orbit, but it's, it's not actually like turning its head. It's not spinning in circles really fast. It's quite still at the center. And so this is a useful metaphor to think about how to approach life this month is to do lots of laps, collect as much information as you can, collect data, but don't move your head looking around all over the place. Stay very focused, stay very still internally, even as the world swirls around you. So, so this, is, this is the key uh, thing to think about this month of Gemini. Okay, so we have a solar eclipse coming up uh, this Saturday in mountain time, it's late Saturday night, like 12.42, 12.45 a.m. Saturday night, that's June 20th. And this is an annular solar eclipse, which means the, the whole orb of the sun is not completely covered. Uh, it won't be visible in the United States, but nonetheless, the energies are felt worldwide. And this happens in the nakshatra of Mrigashira, which literally means the head of a deer. And, and so Mrigashira links Taurus and Gemini. And so it, it is a four-legged animal, very solid, stable, like, like Taurus, like the bull, right? And, and, so, and so we're looking at the metaphor of a deer. So it's, it's a very stable, very peaceful animal, right? Deers are this very like, noble, sweet, peaceful animals. And, and they've got their head on a swivel, right? They're, they're quite sensitive and quite skittish in a way. And, and so we can think of the, the body, the four legs of a deer are in Taurus, that stable, fixed earth sign, that, that month we've just been through. 
and just the head of the deer sticks into Gemini, which Gemini rules the shoulders and the neck, which allows us to, to look around and, and collect all the information all over the place, right? And, and so that's the part of the zodiac where this eclipse is happening. And so it, it's really an important time to investigate what your sources of information are, obviously out in the world right now, right? There's so much different information that it's hard to make sense of it. And, and so we want to collect a lot of it in order to be able to then sort it through, which is more about uh, the lunar eclipse on July 4th. So during a solar eclipse, really, you know, it's not a good time to do anything but spiritual practice. You know, do your sadhana, meditate, uh, be of service, but but not a great time for travel, not a great time for big starting new projects, not a great time to uh, be out in the world agitating for much. It's really a good time to do your spiritual practice and stay home. Uh, the Vedic tradition suggests that you not go out and try to look at the eclipse or or do anything too crazy. Like eclipses are these portals, and we want to be very careful about what we're sending through the portal and what we're inviting through the portal. So so it's a time to just be uh, very conscientious, slow, uh, homey, and and just just um, be at ease as this tumultuous period moves through time and space. So there is a counterbalancing full moon lunar eclipse on July 4th, right? A solar eclipse happens on a new moon, uh, which is this Saturday. And um, the lunar eclipse happens on the subsequent full moon. And this is happening in the sign of Sagittarius in the nakshatra of Purva Ashada, which literally means earlier victory or, or the, the prior victory. So Sagittarius is the counterbalancing energy to Gemini, where Gemini is just collecting data, not really making any value judgments about it, just, just eager, curious, ooh, yeah, new information, not really choosing, oh, this is good, this is bad. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, that, that source of wisdom, and, and is the guru. And so that's where we're discerning, like, okay, of all this data we've collected, this is true and this is propaganda. This is valid and important, and this is frivolous and, um, you know, in excess, and we don't really need to pay attention to that. So, so that full moon, that lunar eclipse on July 4th uh, happens, uh, let's check the notes here, uh, happening about 10.45 p.m. Mountain Time, July 4th. So the fireworks will be going off, and that one will be visible across the United States. So again, wanting to be really careful. Like, uh, strong encouragement not to buy fireworks, not to set off fireworks, not a great time to be, you know, creating explosions. Uh, great time to be at home, praying, meditating, singing, uh, sattvic activities, right? Peaceful, connective uh, activities, meditating on uh, your teachings and your teachers, reflecting on what of the knowledge available to you in the world right now is valid and important and valuable. Uh, Jupiter is retrograde and will have retrograded into Sagittarius at that time. So this is, this is an important time to be reflecting on our teachers and our teachings anyway, right? Really examining what are the baseline beliefs that I just assume are true and that informs my whole worldview and, and is, is that valid? Is that uh, a, a legitimate source of knowledge that I'm basing that those actions off of. And so this is a time to be reflecting on that. And especially that, that full moon, July 4th, really, really great time to do that contemplation and, and examine these baseline beliefs that inform our lives. Uh, so Jupiter, uh, on June 29th, so, so after the solar eclipse, but before the lunar eclipse, June 29th, Jupiter will leave Capricorn and re-enter Sagittarius, right? It's retrograding, so it's going backwards through the sky. So when Jupiter entered Capricorn, that really kicked off the quarantine in its most uh, powerful form. And, and so since Jupiter turned retrograde, we've noticed it's easing off. And you may notice that as far as COVID goes, there's still controversy, but the world is sort of opening back up. You know, New Zealand is totally open. Uh, most places are starting this process of, of 
getting sort of back to normal, right? Or at least opening back up to the public. This is Jupiter about to leave Capricorn, this place of structure and, and you know, uh, limitation, and back into its own sign of Sagittarius, which is more about uh, inspiration, truth, uh, religious principles. And, and so as Jupiter retrogrades into Sagittarius, it's going to be more like back to normal. Society is going to open back up. And in that time, again, this really important focus to examine the sources of your information, the sources of your inspiration, uh, your teachers and teachings are are due for some re-examination. And I know a lot of us are doing that these days is finding new teachers and, and finding new information, doing new research. So, so that's brilliant and very much on time and appropriate. And we just want to be really discerning about it so that we don't get caught in any sort of fundamentalism. And fundamentalism has a wide, you know, can go either way, right? And, um, and making sure that we're really evaluating our teachers for validity and and relevance uh so that's that's june 29th uh before that okay so so let's back up again there's a there's a lot going on and you can feel it in the world there's a there's so many different angles so many different energies swirling around and and so that's that's the time we're living in folks and it is uh, a very sacred time this this time of transition of revolution of rebellion uh, there's big changes happening right now, and you know, we are on this sort of knife's edge, aren't we? This this tipping point, and which way is it going to go? And right now, it could go either way. And so we we stay vigilant and stay prayerful, and and stay honoring of our own life force and that of others. And it's it's through love of self and other that we make it through. So so bear with it here. Uh, these are precious moments in the history of time and, and the history of humanity. So here we are. Um, so Mars has been in the sign of Aquarius. Mars, the warrior planet, in the sign of social structures. And lots of astrologers, including myself, mentioned when Mars is going into Aquarius that there's likely to be some uproar, some, uh, you know, some fires in the streets. And we, we've seen it, right? That's what's happening. And, and so when, when that warrior planet, that fiery planet Mars goes through Aquarius, which is the people, the populace, it's a, it's a very populist energy. And it almost, it doesn't matter what social movement you're aligned with, what end of the political spectrum you're on, you've been out in the streets, right? There's this energy of, of rebellion and, and sort of blowing up, you know, raging against the machine is, is Mars and Aquarius. So that's about to change. On, on Thursday, Mars leaves Aquarius and goes into Pisces. Now, Pisces is the sign of the poet mystic. It's this very abstract place. It's very metaphorical and mystical energy to Pisces. And so this is a time where, you know, we want to be mindful that the movements that we support don't lose momentum. But from now, uh, Thursday, June 18th, Mars goes into Pisces, and it's there until the 16th of August. So in this time, it is quite appropriate for the warrior aspect of ourselves, that Martian quality, to spend some time in the garden and, and do some poetic reflection and do some do some meditating and dreaming and and daydreaming and and be in this more abstract dreamy space because you know august 16th mars goes into its own sign of aries and then we're, we're back into that warrior that more active quality and and there is there can be a more explosive quality to that it's, it's very much aligned with more action whereas pisces is a water sign it's more about just going with the flow and, and so it's, it's an appropriate moment for our warrior quality to imagine the world we want to fight for and to, to go into those dreamy spaces. So, you know, for example, one of the movements that's picked up a lot of momentum in terms of uh, changing social structures is the defunding of the police or, or reallocating resources so that police don't have to show up to every single call. We've got social workers, we've got uh, healthcare providers, we've got people trained in de-escalation showing up to the vast majority of emergencies, right? And we have, we can let the police show up to the situations that they're best equipped. 
to, to deal with, which is far less than they're currently tasked with. So that's, that's a really powerful movement and, and shift to a major social structure. And, and so between this Thursday and August 16th is a great time for our warriors, you know, police are an example of Mars in society, to imagine the sort of world that they would prefer to live in. You know, there, uh, I've seen this quotation go around where the police are like, well, I'm not a social worker. It's like, okay, great. So the police don't want to have to deal with this stuff either. They're not actually well trained to handle these situations. And so let's unburden them of that. And so for our police officers, for all of us, it's a time to reimagine what role in society do we want these individuals to play? Because they have so much power. There's so much capacity to impact society present there. And, and clearly it's not uh, satisfying to most of the population at this point. So let's, th let's take a step back. Let's um, let the warrior take a break and, and, you know, daydream, spend a day daydreaming in the garden and be playful and imaginative and abstract and, and get that zoomed out big picture about what is the appropriate role for the warriors in our society. So that's, that's coming right up this starting this Thursday, um, June 18th. Then the following Wednesday, June 24th, uh, Venus turns direct after, after it's been about uh, six weeks of a retrograde cycle. And, and in the newsletter, there's a link to a beautiful article uh, from the tropical astrological perspective. And, and so this past six weeks, we talked about this last month, how Venus retrograde is a time to reconnect with former lovers and old relationships and really re-examine this retrograde quality, right? It's, it's this inflection, this internalization, this, this re-examination of this area of life. And Venus is lovers, pleasure, enjoyment, what actually brings true pleasure in life. And so as Venus turns direct again, all that reflection becomes enacted. And, and there's a new renewed energy to go out and, and pursue the sources of pleasure in the world. And so hopefully we've, we've done our reflection and figured out what that actually is, what actually brings pleasure. And, and why do I keep getting these same relationships? Okay, now there's a, gonna be a chance to, to do it a little bit differently. So Venus is, is still in Taurus until the end of August. Uh, Taurus, its own sign, fixed Earth, uh, where Venus gets lots of pleasure out of earthly delight. So time in the garden, beautiful flowers, beautiful smells, sights, sounds, uh, still a good opportunity to like indulge yourself a little bit, take a bath, uh, feel that it feels good to be in a body. Find that, that embodied type of pleasure. Our bodies are designed to feel good. It's, they're, they're not just machines of pain as as so often they get painted as and and as so often is an accurate experience of it and and so the invitation is to look for a way to find this grounded earthy sort of pleasure um until until the end of august when who's in a gemini and it's a whole other whole other orientation for venus um so that's that's about it uh again would point you to this um this series of apocalyptic astrology, uh, otherwise known as the Jyotish of COVID, uh, that uh, have been hosted by Cultivate Balance. Uh, there are three 90 minute to two hour sessions that are now hosted on the Cultivate Balance website, which is cultivatebalance.com. They're in the library on my website, vedadave.com slash library. Uh, so tons of information available there. Uh, on my Instagram channel, at Ayurveda Dave, there are some videos. I, I go live every Sunday, most every Sunday, and, and talk for at least 10, 20, sometimes 30, 40 minutes about what's happening that week. So that's an opportunity to connect directly and, and interact and, and either type a question or sometimes you know people jump on and go live with me. So, so great opportunity to connect there. And let's just check the notes, make sure I've said everything that wants to be said. Mm. Yeah, last note on the lunar eclipse, July 4th, is that this happens in, in Purva Shada, that earlier victory. And, and so what this signifies is that victory is available in the early days. And, and so our, the seeds that we plant grow based on how well they're nourished in the early days. And we think of raising a child, you know, the time uh, in the womb 
and the first you know year or so of life set the template in so many ways of the nervous system of that child and and creates the template of how they grow old. you know really the first seven years of life they say all sets the template for the whole rest of of life and so that's the time when purva ashada is really concerned with so again it's this time to be really careful about which seeds you're nurturing which seeds are you watering so we we're collecting all this information this month and and that full moon in july july 4th is the time to really do that discernment and decide what seeds am i watering what seeds am i taking care of and protecting and and urging to grow and and thereby setting yourself up for future success and with this eclipse energy again just be careful don't do anything too crazy don't you know hike to the top of a mountain to do a fire ceremony or something nothing fancy just just be simple uh be loving and prayerful and and really do the this internal process uh and and in the months to come there's lots more external activity and external shift on the way the last thing i'll say is as Jupiter goes back into Sagittarius, there is this sense of going back to normal. Uh, the, the intensity, the panic, the emergency of COVID has eased off significantly. Uh, that's my sense of it at least, and, and let me know if that's not true, but that's, that's my sense uh, from around the world, is that, that it's easing off and things are reopening. Jupiter goes back into Capricorn on November 19th. November 19th through mid-April sometime. And, and so know that this energy of the quarantine, the intensity of, of the COVID emergency is likely to come back November 19th through April of 2021. And so this time period between now, really now in mid-September when the nodes change signs, is this sort of break in the action on some level, it, it's this this respite, and it's but it's coming back. It's not over, and and so prepare wisely. Know where your food and water comes from. Know your friends' addresses. You know, like the and not to be afraid, but to be prepared. Be thoughtful. Be realistic about uh, the things that really support you. What what is it that supports your life, and how do you get access to them? And and so that's. You know, I don't want to be too too dramatic about that, but but I I myself am wary of like, oh cool, like everything's opening up and we're back to normal. It, that that's an illusion. That's a temporary regression before it moves forward in a more direct way. So so I'll I'll leave you with that. Uh, again, intense times, but uh, we're here together, and that's that's how we get through. Uh, look forward to connecting with you. Hope this is helpful. Please reach out if you have any comments, questions, concerns, enthusiasm. Always happy to connect. Till next time, we'll see you next month.